10 years. It has almost been 10 years since Barcelona has beaten Bayern Munich. May of 2015, and they have finally done it. And they didn't just beat Bayern. No, 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 no. They embarrassed Bayern. They destroyed Bayern. And Rafinha humiliated Bayern Munich. He just officially became like a top player in the world at this moment. And it's it's insane. You never would have thought that. But Rafinha, my dude, I owe you an apology. Tons of Barcelona fans owe you an apology. I'm sure a ton of you watching want to apologize to Rafinha. We were open to selling you after this past season. I was on the edge, but if the price was right, we were for it. And brother, you proved us wrong. You deserve every bit of recognition, praise, and more and beyond than you have gotten, and it's insane. He scores a hat-trick against Bayern. Vinicius scores a hat-trick against Dortmund. That, whatever. But where do you think all of the world is going to gravitate to? They're going to gravitate to Vinicius because of the Madrid PR and how insane it is. And it's funny that the Ballon d'Or favorite, who everyone thinks is going to win, who I don't think deserves a Ballon d'Or, I mean, maybe, but a true Ballon d'Or caliber player is good for club and country. And Vinicius is only good in the Real Madrid system. He's a nobody for Brazil, a nobody in the World Cup, a nobody in the Copa America, a nobody in the World Cup qualifiers. But Rafinha, on the other hand, is actually good for club and country. Rafinha, if you keep on this pace, he will 100% be in the running to win the Ballon d'Or for this upcoming season in 2025. Touching on the rest of the video, what's on the agenda? Obviously, we got to praise Rafinha a little more, but we do got to address some of the concerns that we saw from this match and how this definitely is a bigger concern moving into El Clasico. A lot of good we're going to talk about. We're going to highlight a couple key individual players. And then I do want to briefly touch on the Dortmund Madrid match, just because there's a couple things I want to take away from that, that I think could be really important for Barcelona to take away and turn those into tactics for all Classico on Saturday. So before we jump in, thank you guys for clicking this video. I appreciate you guys watching. If you guys enjoy the video, feel free to drop me a like at the end of the video if you enjoy the content. And then please comment your thoughts and opinions below and I'll do my best to respond to all those because I'm extremely excited and eager to hear what everybody has to say. Now looking at the Bayern match, I do want to talk about the critiques first because there's only a few. Number one and two is first, the marking has to be significantly better. The amount of times balls are played where they switch the field and Kunde or Balde are not marked up on that guy far post, there's too many times that I can count. Kunde has to mark up a lot closer because Nabry gets him off balanced crosses it in right to Kane. There's a couple other times where they cross the ball in and Kunde and Balde, they're nowhere near that player on the far post that's like further that's further behind them. And they're not fast enough. Besides Balde, the rest of the team isn't fast enough to really track back. That's that's something they have to fix and they have to mark up better. And then the high line. I was I was so nervous for that entire first half because Bayern could have scored three goals. We're so lucky that Kane was a fraction off sides in that first goal because it was so, so, so close. And there were a couple other times throughout the match where it was extremely close too. Barcelona will not be able to get away with that against Real Madrid. They just won't. They 100% will get torched if that's how they play against Madrid because Vinicius, I hate to say it, he's going to have a field day because he's so quick. He's going to have a field day against Koundé and Kabarsi. Now, luckily, Barcelona has shown that they were able to pretty much shut down Mbappe last year against PSG. But they also have to worry about Rodrigo and Vinicius as well, which makes it a lot more difficult. So if Barcelona plays like they did in the first half defensively against Real Madrid, they're going to get torched. They're going to get scored on two, three times, maybe more. And I hate to say it, but that's that's true. And that's my only complaint in the match is they're not fast enough to track back, and they're not physical enough to be able to at least shake off and fight the defenders to get back to the ball. They're not. And Madrid, I think, is going to be more well-disciplined, and they're going to be smarter, where they know that they're so fast, like Vinicius, they're going to hang back three, four yards, and then they're going to beat them with their pace. So as much as the high line is part of their identity, they're going to have to find a way to win without it because that's not going to work against Madrid. If they can find a way to get the lead and then can play like they did in the second half, then that's a different story because the second half was a lot more disciplined and it was a lot more relaxed where they sat back a little bit, but at the same time, they didn't just play how like Dortmund played against Madrid and pack the entire 11 in the box. Those are my only complaints. Obviously, Rafinha was marvelous. His his skill, his touch, his finishing ability was 12 out of 10. It was mesmerizing. But we also have to look at the one person who was just out of this world was Pedri. I'm going to have to start getting a dictionary when I start to try and describe Pedri because it's like... It's not normal, but I've used that word before. It, it's genius, but I've it's it's like genius, but I've used that word too. 
he's so intellectually ahead of everybody else. You just know like when he was in school, he had to be the smartest kid in school because the way that his brain operates and the way that he plays, it's it's insane. His ball movement, his skill. There was a moment in the second half when he was toying with Bayern and they were playing these quick passes, him, Lamine Yamal, it was like Casado, Lewandowski, whoever else it was. It reminded me of, there were like clips of Barcelona just toying with Real Madrid back in their glory days when they had like Messi, Iniesta, and Xavi, and they were just ticky tocking Madrid to death. And I, I got like a glimpse of that for like a minute or two, and I was like, wow, this kid is just the mastermind and the puppet master behind everything that's happening right now. He's unbelievable. And oh my, I just, that's all I got to say. Lamine Yamal in the first half didn't really get the ball, but when he got the ball, oh, like, can we just take a moment to realize how easy he's beating these players? He's he's toying with Alfonso Davies. He's literally just getting him off his feet and off balance and fainting this way and that way, and then he's megging Serge Gnabry. It was like it was like so easy for him. And then the second half, he got more involved and he played that perfect cross. Just he takes a touch, cuts inside. Perfect through ball, like effortlessly, like 30, 40 yards, right to Rafinha, chest it down, scores. Like they just make it look so easy. Casado's ball, right to Rafinha. He brings it down. During that like three second span of that cross and then Rafinha brought it down, I was like, holy shit. I said that like three times because the ball was perfect. And then the way that Rafinha brought it down was perfect. And then he got the defender off balance, shoots with his right foot, finesses far post, beats Neuer. Unbelievable. Just, it was unbelievable. And I, I will say... The goal that Lewandowski scored, if they called that back due to Fermi and Lopez's arm, you can have your hand on someone. It's different if like his arm was here and the defender was here and you can see he pushes him out and it moves him. He didn't hinder any different movement on Kim and Jay. So I'm glad that was not called back. I would have liked to see a little more from Fermi throughout the match. But again, he was part of an important goal and he made a couple other good opportunities. But man, Pedri, Rafinha, those two, man, were just out of this world and the defense was so much more calm and composed the second half and you got to attribute that to Flick so good job by Flick on the tactics for the second half and then when Donny Olmo came in twice immediately he comes on he plays a perfect through ball to Lewandowski of course he takes too many touches he doesn't shoot he loses the ball goes out of bounds for a goal kick and then he plays another perfect pass to Lamine Yamal and I think unfortunately he shot then it went out of bounds for a corner but two immediate impact plays by Donny Olmo, and I'm glad he was able to get on. Same with Frankie De Jong. I was hoping they subbed off Pedri earlier, but it is what it is. But man, what a match. Looking ahead, if they can play this way attacking-wise against Madrid, they can win. But the way that Dortmund lost to Madrid, it was despicable, and it's 100% on the coach. But this just goes to show Madrid is... It, it, watching that match, it was like... They were going to die if they didn't win that match, which is the mentality you want. It was great to see. If Madrid played like that against Barcelona's defense, I don't think Barcelona can withstand that. Now, I will say, Dortmund should not have changed anything going into that half because what's the one thing that always happens when a team takes a lead against a good team? They immediately sit back and play extremely defensive, and then they always, the other team ends up scoring. It happened to Madrid against Man City. They sat back after they scored in the Champions League. They crowded the box. City ended up scoring. They're lucky that they didn't score another one because De Bruyne in that match, he missed a sitter right in front of the net on the six-yard box, blows it over the net. Madrid's lucky they won that match, but even them, they conceded. It's bound to happen. So if Barcelona can take a lead against Madrid, the last thing they can do is just sit back because they want to score again. You can't allow Madrid to just press, 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 and counterattack because with the speed they have and the skill they have, with all of their players, it's going to be almost impossible to stop. And if Barcelona plays like they did first half, they will get scored on at least two times, maybe three or four against Madrid, and that cannot happen. Now, what I will say is Dortmund scored two goals. If it was almost anybody else than Courtois, I think it was Julian Brandt, had an unbelievable chance. He ripped it, goes upper 90. Courtois in the first half makes an unbelievable save. I think any other keeper, that probably goes in. That was a great chance. They had two more good chances, and Courtois made a great save in the second half. Dorman could have had three or four goals, maybe five. So from an attacking standpoint, you're going to get your chances against Madrid. I expect Barcelona to easily score two goals. The problem is, is how these goals happen. If Barcelona scores two goals first, I actually think they have to keep the press going and try to attack more because the more that they sit back and allow Madrid to just press and press and press like they did against Dortmund, the defense isn't there. The keeper's not there. 
they don't have the talent defensively to withstand that. So for that reason alone, I think Barcelona's going to have to continue to play the same way if they can get a lead in the match. As much as Madrid isn't, they don't look that great. It was an impressive second half due to their energy, but a lot of those goals were preventable, and it's all on coaching at the end of the day. So I think the scoreline kind of hyperinflates how Madrid really looked, but nonetheless, give their credit to them. But I really think that if Barcelona can beat Madrid, they're, they're, they're the clear best team in the world. But until Madrid can lose, they're still the best team because they might not look the best and play the best, but they always win. Or at least at a minimum, they're not losing. So they're the best at not losing and they're the best at winning. So we have to give them their first loss in La Liga. And it's been too long. They deserve a loss. And we're going to do it. I feel it. I hope they do it. Let me know your thoughts about the Bayern Barca match and your thoughts into El Clasico and predictions. And if you guys enjoy this content, don't forget to drop me a like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys back here next time. Peace.